Yo, yo, YouTubers, what is up? I am super excited today to bring to you the Iron Studios Iron Spidey statue. Now, we've only seen in hands from a Chinese collector. Uh, as far as I know, as of right now, I'm the only U.S. collector to get this. This is limited to 7.30 and it actually already is sold out. It's uh, waitlisted on uh, Sideshow's website. Uh, decently heavy box. Uh, it's probably just the base weight I'm really feeling. Uh, nice colored art box. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. I love Iron Spidey suits. I, for me, it's my favorite Spider-Man outfit from, you know, like all the movies. Big fan of it. Looks like this is the top. So they did not do tape. They did do the styrofoam Velcro. It's always great. I love the velcro. It's so much easier. Reusable, more secure, and so much easier. Alrighty. So it looks like here we have the Spider-Man body, possibly head and the tentacles. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this first though. So we get this base out. Alrighty, so this is the base. Looks like it's, yeah, this is definitely the heavy part. We have little styrofoam inserts to keep it from moving. So I'm just gonna remove those first before I try to remove the base. Always wanna remove those first before you try to force out the base because it's meant to not move with these inside. As you can see, it's in a plastic bag and this like paper material covering it. Here we are. Good weight, doesn't feel super hollow. I have number 255 of 730. Ah, oh, fresh resin smell. Gotta love it. If you're a hardcore statue collector, everyone knows that fresh smell you get when you open up a, you know, a new package. It's almost addictive. You know, you love that feeling, the smell of getting that fresh new statue. So, looks like the base is just two parts, which makes sense. This is quite big, this piece I'm taking out now. It has to be at least two feet long. Uh, decent weight to this. Uh, so, feels possibly plastic with resin. Now the question begs, where does this even go? I think like, no. Oh, that's not it. This is right. Alrighty, just like that. A little tricky to get that inserted in, but we got it. You got to put it inside this, and then there's two pegs. Alrighty, great base. I like it. it doesn't take up too much space. I know one collector buddy of mine actually canceled this after seeing the in hands. He thought the paint job was terrible. So I'll be the judge of that. You know, historically for me, uh, Iron Studios does fantastic paint jobs. And 
Now, this suit's more like a Iron Man type suit. Alrighty, so here is the body. Obviously, Spider Man is just a kid, so it's not super big. Now, to find the peg, I think it's this one right here. This is going to be possibly the head. They actually taped this in. Yeah, here's the two heads. So let's put one of these bad boys on. This does come with an unmasked portrait, so it's my first Spider Man statue. An unmasked portrait. Head looks fantastic, detailed all throughout. Might need to use my blow dryer to get rid of the freaking like dust and crap on here. All right, so there's a hand here and then there's the tentacles. Next is just the tentacles. So this is part of the Iron Spidey suit. He has these four tentacle type things. Now this uh, costume actually is in three movies, if you count it. Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and a little bit of Spider-Man Far From Home. So that's really cool that they have it in multiple movies. As far as I can tell, these are not labeled, so I'm gonna have to just guess on which one fits where. All right, I think this is where this one goes. All right, looks like that's correct. All right, apologies, this will take a little bit of time. These are individually wrapped. And so I have to, you know, be careful, obviously. But I want you guys to see the making of a masterpiece. I can see that. I'm pretty sure this one goes here. Yeah. They slide nice and easy, so. No issues there. Would be nice if they labeled it, but not a big issue. There's only four of them. It's not like, you know, 30 pieces. You know, it's like I saw someone unboxing the Prime 1 Shockwave. Unreal. Thing took, I think they said like two or four hours to unbox. That's insane. I know those Transformers do take forever, and I always dread the day I ever have to take it apart. All right, so I think this one goes like this. Yep. Yeah, the paint job is very, uh, it's, if any of you own the Iron Man Civil War, where they use the, like, the car paint, very juicy looking, uh, this one is a very juicy paint job, very similar to the Iron Man from Civil War that Iron Studios did, where it's a, that type of paint job. Alrighty, there we have it. The only other parts in here, there's some batteries, which I assume are going to be for the head, uh, which means you'll probably have to take it off to turn it on. And the unmasked portrait, which is right here.
Although I'm pretty sure his body's supposed to light up as well, but I don't see an AC adapter. I just see those batteries. So probably just in the head off to figure out the light up situation. But there we have it, Iron Spidey. I'm gonna go ahead and set him up and see what we think. Alrighty, everybody. So I got Iron Spidey all lit up here in the collection. Here is his designated spot. Uh, eventually I got the Iron Spidey bust from Queen Studios to the left. Can't wait to get that. That'll look absolutely amazing. But Iron Spidey is absolutely phenomenal. I've been looking at him for the last 15 minutes, looking at the paint job, everything about him. It took me a while to figure out how to get the light up to work. Uh, so the light up, you have to remove the back part of the head. Uh, so that is quite uh, annoying and difficult. So if you want to use the light up, you have to take off the back part of the head and insert three little batteries and press a button. So that's really annoying. I always hate having to do that. Generally, when a statue is like that, I never use the light up just because it's so inconvenient to remove a head, remove a battery part, and press a button. And you know, it's like the Sideshow Terminator. That's how that one is. You have to remove the back part of the head to you know, press a button. So the light up is definitely cool. Looks great. You know, this reminds me of the scene where he first got the, you know, Iron Spidey suit because he was in a similar pose and his eyes just lit up. So that's really cool. And I know the bust also has light up eyes and some light up parts. For a second, I thought this had light up parts as well, but it doesn't. It's just painted white. But show you the light up eyes. They are quite bright and they look cool. We'll love if it feels AC adapter. It's not. However, the unlit eyes look great as well. You can see the different uh, texture detail in the light up. If I could focus. Uh, you can't see it in film, but in real life, uh, it does have, you can see the texture detail from it. So I actually connected this so I could turn this on and off for my freaking Infinity Gauntlet. But I, I've been dreaming of this display for so long. You guys have no idea. I was talking to a collector about getting the Mondo with those three and all the props for literally like, oh, years. When they first showed this off, this was my vision. So it's not quite finished yet. Still gotta get the two bus and the remaining Black Order members. But I'm just one step closer to finishing my little Infinity War Endgame Saga setup. You know, so very close. I absolutely love this Iron Spidey. Looks really good. Uh, the one thing I will say, I think this is a statue better placed up high. Uh, you know, here, this is about 26 inches tall, but it looks better if it's more like a 50 inch tall. You know, you put it like top Stuva shelf and it'll look better. But, you know, if I'm sitting down, I can see it pretty darn good. And it looks amazing next to Thanos. You know, Thanos is such a beast, but Spider-Man definitely really good in those tentacles really bring out you know how big it is you know without the tentacles it wouldn't look nearly as big i sort of wish they did give the option to display without the tentacles and you have a, like a switch out part i think that'd be cool granted i would always display the tentacles because they just look so badass i'm gonna go ahead and turn the light off so you can see it now unlit all righty so here it is without the light up you can see obviously <laughs> No, it's a bit, pretty big difference. I, I will say the first time I removed the back uh, part of the head, it was very difficult. The second time, super easy. I'm not sure if maybe it was a little bit of glue making it stuck, but it was much easier to remove the back part of the head the second time. So this does come also with a switch out portrait, which I'll show you here soon. Let's get some closer details, you know, look at this. So design and concept wise, you have this under base similar to the Thanos. The Thanos is, Infinity Stones, however, they're not colored in, where Iron Spidey has the Avenger logo. Similar design, this one's black instead of gray, but I love the underbase with that Avengers logo. And then you have this giant rock and uh, rumble. This is uh, from the scene at Titan, you know, Thanos' home planet when Iron Spidey was there. So he's standing on this rubble from, you know, could be a spaceship, which is probably what I would assume it to be. You have this uh, like boulder type thing here. Love the paint job on this, it looks excellent. The rock has shades of brown, red, black. Looks really cool. And you know, very detailed, love the base. Definitely a better base than Thanos. And this looks great. You can see the rust effect. The like, you know, he's standing on this rock and then he also has a peg right there. You know, as you saw in the unboxing, 
So overall, the base is fantastic. I think it looks really cool. Now on the Spider-Man itself. So Spider-Man does have a unique paint job. So his feet are weathered, you know, because he's been running around in r rubble. He has some texture to him, and then the other parts are more glossy. So it's very true to the movie, actually. Now, like right here, you can see texture, detail. But then like the face part is more of almost like a metalish look. It reminds me of an Iron Man paint job. Very glossy and red. Uh, for some reason, camera, it's coming off slightly different than in person. In person, it's a like a deep, almost like a car red. And then there is the actual Spider-Man see you know like the spider symbol on his chest his arms here's the parts that normally light up they're just white painted white the paint job also has a lot of like almost like specks if you want to call it uh, it's really just like a weathered look if you ask me you know he's in an intense battle fighting against Thanos so it's not a super clean look and then here is the portrait up close. You can see the eyes do have detail in that mask, which looks awesome. It has that sort of like beehive look. So the tentacles are awesome. They fit in great. Uh, they have a nice peg. They look really good. You no, know, they're gold. They look awesome. I like the way they're spread out. They do go quite forward. So if you're going to display this in a Besta or Stuva, it'd probably be quite difficult you know but for my setup it looks awesome yeah i'm very happy with this i think this is one of the best spider-man statues out there by far the best movie one without a doubt is it better than their first spider-man i mean that one's incredibly dynamic so much going on in the base but the overall spider-man look is cooler on this the other one probably has a better scene choice but Spider-Man himself, I don't see a better Spider-Man out there. I want to show you the switch out portrait now. Just grabbing it. So I'm actually quite happy with this uh, Tom Holland portrait. Let me show this to you. I think this looks really good. It looks just like him. Paint job is good. Eyes are good. You know, look at those eyes. You know, it looks fantastic. Uh, to me, that looks just like Tom Holland. That's an incredible likeness. Very easy to take the head on and off. You know, it's magnetized, but it's not super strong. You know, so. Put the Tom Holland head in. So I would definitely display this Tom Holland head. You know, he's, uh, ever since Far From Home, he's become one of my more favorite uh, Spider-Mans, you know. I, I think for me, in order, I might put it Maybe Tom Holland is number one. Number two, I can't remember the guy's name. The one from The Amazing Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire probably last. Just because his older movies aren't as good. And, you know, I, I just recently watched those ones too. But I love The Amazing Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield, that's his name. Andrew Garfield. All right, so here you can see the Unmasked, which I also think looks great. Looks better in person than photos. In the original, you know, like prototype photos, I wasn't a huge fan. But I do think it looks much better in person. We'll do some uh, good close-ups of that. See that the hair looks good, paint job is good, likeness is good. I have no qualms on this portrait at all. I know some people probably will, and other people are just like Spider-Man has to be the mask only. But I think this looks great, and it does give you variety. And variety is always good because it helps you so you don't get bored of your statues. You know, looking at the exact same thing every day to some people might get boring. That's why switch out parts are great because it helps freshen up the statue, give it a different look. Some statues really don't need it. You know, like that mummy statue does not need anything. But, you know, something like the Thanos and Iron Spidey having a switch out portrait and, you know, all the one thirds, it, I think it really does help. So for now, I'm gonna display the masked head. I will display the unmasked. Uh, you know, I will probably vary it quite often. I do like this unmasked portrait. I think it looks awesome. But we'll go ahead and put the masked portrait back on. Now this one just looks so good. Look at that. Very light too. It doesn't weigh a lot. But it's a decent magnet. You saw as they pulled it out of like, pulled the figure almost. 
crazy. Yep, but here he is. Uh, you know, this is an $800 statue with a 730 edition size. Uh, for me, it's worth it, and I love it. I think the paint job's fantastic. The sculpt is excellent. The pose is great. You know, I don't have any qualms with this. This is probably now my favorite Spider-Man statue, so I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to get the Iron Spidey bust to display right next to it. I think having them displayed next to each other will look absolutely phenomenal. You know, and I love the vibrant color of it. I think it really looks good. You know, and especially in the setup I have where everything's more realistic, having that bright, juicy red looks awesome. So I definitely highly recommend this. If you have this on order, congrats. Uh, if you don't, you can jump on the wait list. But, you know, this is one I definitely foresee a lot of collectors really enjoying when they get this in hand. So definitely, you know, like a solid, like 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the only thing I'd make this better is if the light up was easier and not a freaking half to take out the back part of the head and maybe given an option for not displaying the tentacles if you don't want to due to space constraints. Other than that, this is an amazing statue and I'm very happy with it. So there you have it, folks. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.